So Alan Turing is not getting a pardon, and to be perfectly honest with you, I am not surprised. You see, the rationale that was presented for this decision was that what Alan Turing was convicted of was, at the time of conviction, considered to be a crime. But of course, you know, we can all look at instances in the past in which a similar occasion arose. For example, let's look at Galileo Galilei, who was convicted and sentenced to house arrest on the basis of a crime that, of course, no sane person in today's world would consider to be a crime anymore. And, of course, he has by now received his pardon. But that's 400 years later. You see, that is the real problem. The rationale that was presented is, of course, nonsense. It has nothing to do with why this pardon was not granted now. The real reason is that it is too soon. You see, this so-called crime that Alan Turing was convicted of has been repealed. It has been realized that no crime at all is involved here. We realize now that the man is guilty of no crime whatsoever. But it has only been taken off the statute books as a crime in recent history, in living memory. And that is the problem here. That is the real problem. That is the real cynical reason why this pardon has not been granted today. The real reason is that if this pardon were granted today, posthumously, to Alan Turing, the floodgates would open to a multitude of people who were in the same boat as this poor unfortunate man, but who are still alive and who could claim compensation of the state. And surely the state wouldn't want to be seen to be forking out money to right a wrong that was done 40, 50 or 60 years ago. Would it now? That wouldn't be on. So let's wait. Let's wait another 100 years or 200 years to make absolutely sure that there are no living relatives who remember granddad's great sorrow alive so that there can be absolutely no chance that anybody will come looking for any sort of compensation and then I am quite sure this pardon will be granted quite magnanimously to Alan Turing.